writers at Marvel were not smart, however. Instead, what we ended up with was a relentless deluge of smug, generic, overpowered, patronising boss bitches. <gasps> It's Blue. Make sure you like and subscribe and go follow me on my Twitch and my other YouTube channel. Those links are down below, along with my Patreon, where I post more content on there that I don't post here. Damn! This Parker finer than a motherfucker. Damn! I knocked the dust off that pussy. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be reacting to more Critical Chinker. The Marvels was doomed from the start. I can't read that fast. <laughs> you know, it's always interesting to watch the reaction in the entertainment media complex when they run smack bang into a reality so irrefutable that no amount of cope, double think, spin doctoring, or manipulative, and that's a good thing, articles can possibly obfuscate it. That's right, the court of box office opinion has rendered its verdict on the Marvels, dear viewer, and their judgement has been harsh and unanimous. This movie is officially a flop. In fact, calling the Marvels a flop is a bit like saying that Movie Bob has some questionable opinions about the human race. Yes, it's technically a true statement, but it doesn't really encompass the full magnitude of the problem. The movie recorded an embarrassing $47 million on its opening domestic weekend, by far the worst performance out of any Marvel movie ever. Really Damn man, even The Incredible Hulk managed to bring in $55 million, and that was 15 years ago. Oh my goodness. Who could possibly have predicted this? Well, everyone as it turns out. Everyone except the people who made the thing, apparently. No matter how you try to spin it, the movie has been an unmitigated disaster, and now that it's impossible to lie their way out of that fact, the focus has shifted instead on finding a politically acceptable explanation that allows the studio to save face. It wasn't a bad movie, you see. The real problem was the actor's strike preventing the stars from promoting it. Because truly, whenever Brie Larson opens her mouth to talk about Captain Marvel, she's an instant hit with audiences. Tom Cruise, that be you? No, I'll be the first me, not the next Tom Cruise. Thank you very much. Well, wow. you know. And if there's one thing we can all that agree on, it's that scripted, corporate-approved puff video. piece interviews on late-night talk shows are where every thinking man goes to form their opinions about the latest film releases. How about superhero fatigue? That's a reliable excuse that can get conveniently wheeled out whenever a film flops. Marvel have just been putting out too many hits in recent years, proving the point that you really can have too much of a good thing. And then of course, there's the ultimate get out of jail free card for your shitty movie. Sexism and misogyny. All of those toxic man babies out there just couldn't stomach the idea of a female led movie and had to pummel it into the ground lest other humans of a female persuasion start getting dangerous ideas that they can do things for themselves. Everything is sexist, everything is racist, everything is homophobic, and you have to point it all out. Be silent. Keep your full tongue behind your teeth. It's mostly bullshit, of course, and it either ignores or misrepresents the multitude of actual reasons why this movie was practically doomed from the start. But hey, if the access media aren't interested in calling it like it is, then I guess the drinker will have to step in and do their job for them. So strap in as I break down the real reasons why the Marvels flopped. It is a good time to pause. Um, yeah, I... I... Oh, Personally, it just didn't seem like they did do a lot of advertising. Like they said, they could claim the writer's strike and other things, and um, the actors or actresses weren't really, or I should just say actresses, weren't really able to go out there and promote it, and that could be true. However, if there are talk shows and, I don't know, social media and other things, um, lots of lots of people have been able to promote their own movies, movies don't, that don't expect that much uh, coming back in and they have been doing kind of fine. I mean, given the writer's strike and how people just see movies less and less nowadays than they kind of ever have, possibly. But still, the difference in what you would expect and what you spent on this movie for it to do the absolute worst is very different from other movies. Not bringing in maybe a whole lot, maybe not even more than what they did, 47 million. Um, but still kind of hitting around the area that they at least assumed they would bring in. That means that you did terrible, because you assumed, I would think, 
to do way better. One, it's part of a dying brand. You don't need me to tell you that the MCU has been in decline for several years now, partly caused by a meandering, fragmented and unengaging narrative that doesn't really feel like it knows where it's going or that it's building towards anything, and partly because of a sharp decline in the quality of their movies. Marvel suffered a series of embarrassing flops and underperformers over the past three years, meaning there's less and less incentive to go see them. Yeah, superhero fatigue is a thing that's starting to cut into the box office, but more specifically, what they're facing here is Marvel fatigue. There's too much content, and it's mostly shit, and as a result, it's souring people on the entire brand. Two, there's no big names attached to it. Harsh as this may sound, none of the actors in this movie are the kind of box office draws that a film like this desperately needs to generate buzz. Oh, Iman Vellani, Zawi Ashton, and Tayona Paris are all fucking nobodies. Brie Larson's only high profile role was in the first Captain Marvel four years earlier, and at this point, even Samuel Jackson is not all that exciting. Partly because he seems determined to appear in every single movie getting made, so his presence isn't exactly a big event anymore, and partly because nobody cares about his character now. Nick Fury's been gradually broken down and deconstructed in recent years to the point where the coolest character in the MCU, played by the coolest actor in Hollywood, feels more like a fat, embarrassing middle-aged dad trying to hang with his son's friends. Which brings me along to my next point. Number three, there's no popular characters. The movie features a trio of female superheroes at its core, two of which have only appeared in obscure Disney Plus shows, and a third which was never popular in the first place and has barely been seen in over four years. Yeah, I know there's still a few die-hard Marvel NPCs out there that'll literally defend anything Aww. shat out by the MCU and just love to point out that the first Captain Marvel made over a billion dollars at a time when every fucking oh, wow. Marvel movie was making a billion dollars. In reality though, it was the most protected movie in history, the review scores were carefully managed to give it the most positive rating possible, and it was released under the most favourable market conditions that have ever existed, conveniently sandwiched between two of the biggest films in the entire MCU, when excitement for the brand was at a fever pitch, with a marketing campaign that somehow managed to convince everyone that it was going to be an event movie on the same level as Infinity War and Endgame. Put simply, it wasn't, but by the time everyone realised that fact, it was too late and the movie had made bank. Either way, the point is that nobody was particularly invested in Captain Marvel as a character, mainly because she didn't really have one. She was a perfect example of what Gary likes to call the hero's journey, a wish fulfillment power fantasy that starts out strong and awesome, is liked by almost everyone, wins at everything to become even stronger and more awesome, and eventually realises that the only thing holding her back from god tier level of awesomeness is the rest of the world failing to accept how amazing she is. I mean, really, is it any wonder that people didn't connect with a character like that? And the thing is, she's not exactly alone either, which brings me neatly on to... Number four, the MCU. After disposing of Ike Perlmutter, who was basically the only thing keeping the MCU on track, one of Kevin Feige's stated objectives was to introduce more female characters into the MCU. In or fact, 50%? he wanted more than 50% of Marvel heroes to be female. Now, a smart writer could have I found ways her. to gradually introduce cool, interesting, well-rounded female characters to complement rather than undermine the existing male heroes. You know, proving the point that both men and women are pretty awesome in their own ways, and that when they work together instead of against each other, great things can happen. The writers at Marvel were not smart, however. Instead, what we ended up with was a relentless deluge of smug, generic, overpowered, patronising boss bitches that the scripts were painfully eager to depict as smarter, stronger, more capable, more righteous, and more assertive than the dumb, timid, outdated imposters now wearing our favourite heroes like skin suits. They usually excelled in traditionally male dominated fields like science, technology, aerospace and engineering. They were often completely self-taught and of course they never needed help from a man. I have to comment on all of those scenes. It was just scene after scene after scene of perfect just gold points of examples um, demonstrating another thing that is super fair to point out. It's also a personality issue. It's not just the well we've gone over the lazy writing and you've gone over pushing the narrative of what we should think about this character and not actually showing it to us. You're not spending an entire movie building up these personality types or why people admire them or why they should be admired, like with Iron Man building in a cave, like that. All the whole thing that's already been said, um, you're kind of just 
immediately showing that they're super strong, super capable, they're already at the top, but then also trying to convince us to root for them so they can just become, what, even more at the top? We never see them in a low point, so it's also kind of just stale because nobody want, but people want to root for an underdog, and people want to see people climb. They want to see progression. They want to see a story. They want to see character development, and you're not really providing any of those things along with very lazy, corny writing. So you're like not almost, you're almost selling nothing. One or the other would be at least a give or take. Oh, well, at least the writing's really good. Character's kind of lacking. And then vice versa. Okay, well, the character's amazing, but this movie, you could tell there was a little bit of laziness with the writing. But people have complained about the CGI going backwards. People have complained about the writing just being terrible, but oh no, it's writer's strike. People have also complained about, again, the character's themselves not being very thought out and kind of being thrown in there and forcefully convinced oh you love this character and it's like well we don't really know who these superheroes are don't know any other names why are they relevant why are they super important a lot of these other past superheroes have kind of relied off of popularity from comic books and then once you make a movie about them you're kind of two or three movies in there's hype now but you barely only had one marvel movie captain marvel and he pointed out something really great it was sandwiched between two of probably the most successful movies ever by Marvel. So all of the hype is going to make people see it. You're expecting this sandwich between waiting for that. You're going to go ahead and see what's coming out in the middle. So I'm not purposely trying to take away credit where credit's due. I didn't know that they grossed that much money. So I take back anything that I said that might have hinted. How well did that movie even do? Well, apparently it did amazing. It did great. However, it is also still fair to point out, well, why did it do amazing? And it also says something that... People don't really reflect and talk back about that movie as much as they do about the other ones that made about the same amount of money. Kind of showing that even if a lot of people want to go see it, it doesn't seem to have demonstrated as much of an impact as the other ones. They never needed help from a man. And by God, Marvel really went all in with this one. If a movie or TV show happened to have a male lead, you could basically guarantee there would be at least two or three of these strong female supporting characters hovering around him, making fun of his grandiose posturing, and consistently out performing him in every possible way. On the other hand, if the movie was female-led, then the favour was absolutely never returned, because of course, that door only ever swings one way. And while this isn't a very diplomatic way of putting it, fuck me, that shit became real old real fast. The resulting oversaturation of poorly written, superficially strong but fundamentally unlikable female characters was soon mockingly labelled the MCU, and the result was a gradual souring of audiences towards any new female character. Characters. People just didn't trust them anymore because they knew exactly what they'd be getting when one of them showed up. Just another smug feminist power fantasy here to put men in their place and pander to the female demographic. And really, Captain Marvel pretty much set the tone for the MCU before it was even a thing. She was the quintessential Marvel girl boss, always strong, always being told how great she is, never vulnerable, weak or flawed, and ultimately so physically powerful that she was practically unusable as a hero because nothing could threaten her. After four years of being beaten over the head by the insufferable girl boss archetype, it's no wonder the audiences were less than excited to go see a movie built around three of the fucking things. Number five, the... it sucks. I mean, I don't think that point requires much elaboration, really. The Marvels is basically a shit film with a bland, formulaic story that feels like it was written by a retarded AI, boring characters with nonsensical motivations, apathetic performances, crappy editing and visual effects, and absolutely no heart or passion. In short, The Marvels was basically always going to fail because most of the conditions that set the original movie up to succeed were now working against it. And it does make me wonder if this film might represent a turning point of sorts, an end to the bloated, predictable excesses of a studio that once believed it could do no wrong, an end to the tired, predictable girl boss trope that's blighted so many people's enjoyment of the MCU, and in a larger sense, an end to the reign of the big budget superhero movie. Next year is going to be a quiet one for Marvel, with only a single movie penciled in for release, and it does make me wonder oh. if they'll use this low in production to rethink their creative direction. Time will tell, but something tells me the failure of the Marvels is something they won't forget in a hurry.
Now, just before I fuck off to drink myself into oblivion again, I wanted to remind you that my shiny new Critical Drinker merch store is now up and running and accepting orders. I figured it was Aww. about time to turn this stuff over to artists and designers who actually knew what they were doing, and Just they've already the produced some kick-ass designs that look miles better than anything that was available before. So if you're interested in taking a look, oh I'll goodness. leave a link in the description. Anyway, that's, that's all I've got for today. <laughs> the last one. Go away now. Oh, that's funny. I love that last one. Um, yeah, I think that whenever I'm having a thought and then he later ends up saying it, I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's what I meant. I need to get better at articulating. I already am forgetting how he said it and how he worded it, but it was something like spitting on all of the movies that put you there in the first place. There's something about that that shouldn't have even been a thought to do, um, but it is over and over again. It's actually their formula. Like, it's what they're purposely doing every time. It's their ingredients. So, that's weird. And it can only be said so many times, at least by me. I'm not criticizing his video, just by me. I'm trying my best to not be repetitive. Uh, I think that his videos are very good at deciphering the differences in each one, the writing, um, the series, where it went wrong, female characters specifically, when Disney and this person took over, like very good at pointing out She-Hulk specifically, um, whereas I kind of just muddy everything together and go over it like a summary each time it feels. But um, I do also feel like I learn stuff each time whenever I watch it, like, oh yeah, no, that was what happened or that was how it was worded better. Hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, make sure you go check out Critical Drinker's channel because he's the one who made this video. Um, and then also like and subscribe if you haven't already to mine. And I'll see you all next time. Bye -bye, baby blue.